This is called Between Planes. Waiting between planes, love, field, Dallas. A bird, a grackle I see, flies through the terminal, landing near my seat, gazing out the large windows, looking for a way out, anxiously pacing up and down on the carpet, then fluttering off, soaring through the corridor to other large windows higher up, still gazing out, looking at the wide open spaces, airliners, other grackles flying freely. I watched this go on for an hour or so. Not one other pair of human eyes notices this saga, plight a lone grackle, and trapped, no way out, marooned, with no ticket, between planes. Thank you. And now we have Jeffrey Taylor. Let's give him a big hand. He's the newest member of Austin Poetry Society. Entitled Sam and Betty, and you won't hear Sam and Betty in there. But that was the prompt, the story of Sam and Betty. They're a brother and sister who hung out for decades at uh, Washington University at St. Louis. And occasionally they lived in their cars, occasionally they slept. Rumor has it, legend has it, up in the fourth floor lounge. And they came to the various talks and teas and contributed to the talks and also. Um, contribute to the eating of the uh, cheese and crackers. Oh, and nice. uh, came with some of the tea bags apparently left with them too. <laughs> so um, if you uh, are interested in, in more on this interesting story, just Google Sam and Betty um, in quotes, and at least as of last week, um, when this was written, they were the second on Google. So Sam and Betty. At the university, there is a ledge, really no more than a misplaced form when the concrete was poured. Birds have perched and deposited. Leaf litter has fallen off the roof, and now there is a tree. And growing in this unlikely place, a natural bonsai, beautiful in its tenacious hold, blown and shaped by wind, sun, exposure, fed only by what is left behind, or quietly taken from abundance. And now its shade throws a sundial, its quarter past the third bolt hole. Its quarter, it, and if you look carefully, you see the concrete is not so weathered in its shade. Mm -hmm. Jeffrey, and now we have Mr. Cracker Fox. Mr. Fox, here he comes. <laughs> from the heart, given and received. For some of us, thanks covers the onus of multiple error. For some of us, thanks is demanded for the least thing. For some of us, thanks is wanted, deserved or not. For some of us, 
Thanks smells a lot like turkey and pumpkin pie. For some of us, just a little thanks goes a long way. For some of us, think thanks through to a logical conclusion. For some of us, give thanks to you know who for who knows what. <laughs> For some of us had better damn well have thanks for what we got. For some of us, thanks has strings attached. For some of us are in love with thanks. Some, for some of us, use thanks in our poems. For some of us, thanks are lucky stars. Some of us, us. Uh, and happy holidays. Oh, gratitude, gratitude, gratitude. Yes, thank you. And now we have Louise Richards and the ever talented. Yeah. <laughs> I scheduled my backyard open mic and movie, um, what turned out to be the coldest night of the year last, right. week, last Wednesday. Um, but Tom showed up, yay. And my friend Mindy Reed showed up. And we, um, we had some chips and dip and uh, saw some, a part of the movie until the wind knocked the screen over. <laughs> not we tried. But, not to be daunted, never. never. Um, it seems like things are warming up a little bit, so if you're interested in coming on the night of Wednesday, December 3rd, and the same thing would happen on the night of Wednesday, um, um, no, see, December 3rd, or Wednesday, December 17th, which is also a Wednesday. We'll try it again, and we'll we'll start at five and have an open mic until about seven. Then we'll see a movie, and I I think the movie on the third will be a little known Bill Murray movie, which I think is very funny, called The Man Who Knew Too Little. It's a post um, post Cold War spy spoof. Very funny, very colorful. Anyway. But the big event coming up is, is on December 13th and 14th, which is a Saturday and Sunday, at Recycled Reads 5335 Burnett Road. Um, the Saturday is filled up with Girl Scouts and children's choirs and brass choirs and all kinds of things like that. But right here we have some stalwart uh, poets and the musicians who have pledged to come. And we, we and it's, it's from noon till six both days, so there's a lot of time to fill. And we still have maybe two and a half hours to fill at the end of Sunday. So if you're interested, um, after the whole proceedings here, come back and I'll give you one of my cards that has my email address on it and let me know if you want to come. Or if you just want to have my email address. Um, <laughs> I wrote this poem, I started writing this poem, and I didn't really know where I was going with it uh, until I came to the end. But it, it is autobiographical. A day in November. Below the ocean swells of sheets and blankets and comforters, I slept in the deep of my bed while muffled grown-up sounds of an early Saturday morning filtered down to my ears, half knowing it was of a school day, half wanting to sleep and return to childhood dreams of flying or swimming the sea. My father wanted to take us away from the chatter of TV on the day the man who killed the president was killed himself. And that is all the world could think about, could talk about. We would take the bass boat to the lake and forget the world. Nothing would fill our thoughts but sun and breeze and water. 
for a few hours anyway, of picnicking and fishing and boating, the world would recover, we would recover, in 50 years or so. Thank you. I realized it wasn't on a Saturday when I came to the but that was it. Thank you. Thank you. And now we have Robin Barrett. I think that's your name, right, Barrett? Is that correct? Yes. Robin, let's give a good hand. named Harriet and Harriet now has a little sister so I, I was inspired by the mayhem in my life now to write a cycle of 18 cat poems and I'm, I'm not going to read all of them you're lucky okay. <laughs> baby cat Ashira sleeps like a furry amoeba in my lap thin blob cat doesn't divide but merges in ever-changing forms with herself supple as a single cell. The perfect feline, the complete tiger, lies within each stray tabby. Even if they have lived eight of their nine lives, they will come and come again. Again, that's apologies to Rumi on that one. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. We always need cat poems. Never can have too many. And now let's welcome, who is he? Ben Pear. Ben Pear, right there. Let's give him a big hand. Thank you, Linda, for organizing this and keeping it going every month. And, uh, particularly this month, because I'm so sick of reading all the other stuff in the news, and it's such a bummer, and I get to come here, and it's like a relief from the world. Thank you. <laughs> kind of like a beach party movie. <laughs> which brings me to this point, which is entitled Calabanga. I was waxing down my surfboard mm. while staring blankly at the sea when the ghost of life appeared on the beach town next to me. I have treasures for you. You will become extremely wealthy and have all you most want, he proclaimed. Cowabunga, I exclaimed. You will meet a beautiful lady, devoted to you for all her life. You will love her too and take her for a wife. Cowabunga! <laughs> she will fulfill your every desire, for yours are hers as well. And with age, your love like tides will swell. Cowabunga! He disappeared and I paddled gladly out to sea. I caught a heavy wave that soon overpowered me. I wiped out and the ocean threw me down. It crashed me hard against its floor and held me sure that I would drown. I perceived a light to which I serenely swam. The light of death embraced me and I, oh so calm, but the voice of the ghost then spoke once more. You must return, for you still have much to learn before you are allowed into the light. My head searched above the surf, and I gasped for air. I clawed the sand till I could stand and stagger to the shore. I never could afford a mansion and lived frugally all my life. I married a gorgeous woman, though few would say that of my wife. I am content with all that came to be. I learned much indeed, you see, since when the ghost had spoke to me. I internalized the old songs, actualized them religiously. I lived the, the wisdoms in complete accord. The best things in life are free. Beauty is in the eye of the beholder. Virtue is its own reward. So many I won't quote them all. He lives best who loveth best. All things, both great and small. Tower, Banka. <laughs> Thank you, Ben. We needed that. Okay, and now I welcome Ron Kewen. He's going to sing a song.
<laughs> well, uh, you poets have done it again. This particular song is based on a poem called Joyfully Composed. And it was written by Trevor Wainwright, and he's in England. And he'll be watching this video, so I say hi to Trevor. And he'll be back in April for the International Poetry Festival, like he was here last April. And here they are, that's, that's a bunch of wow. You might want to turn it down a little. The guitar is, there you go. I'm not picky. <laughs> of America and Indiana town A small and quiet junction in Terre Haute it's found By the statue of Max Ehrman I thoughtfully sat down And I watched some of the folks walking around I came all the way from England to this famous place to see I watch the folks walk by, they do not know their history I'm waiting for significance to fall into my lap But it's just another locale on my map Day sun is where I sit and bask, and I set upon my poet's certainly task. While the cars are going fast and going slow, if you notice what I joyfully compose, I came all the way from England to this famous place to see. I watch the folks walk by, they do not know their history. I'm waiting for significance to fall into my lap But it's just another locale on my map The time does roll and I repose I'm lost in reverie I suppose the hour is coming soon this peaceful day when I must get up and then be on my way like the cars I'll move off when the lights turn green a special place not on the map but in my memory I came all the way from England to this famous place to see I watched the folks walk by, they do not know their history I am waiting for significance to fall into my lap But it's just another locale on my map But it's just another locale on this map Thank you. We love song and dance. Yes, we do.